To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello, my dear students. Welcome to today's lesson. I'm going to continue the lesson, Inheritance. So we started off the lesson by discussing the characters that are inherited, that are seen in the human population. Some were common inherited characters like the nature of hair, complexion, how your thumb is, dimples, earlobes, those were common inherited characters. Then we discuss some rare inherited characters like syndactyle, polydactyle. So those were the characteristics. So not only in humans, not only in people, all the other organisms, plants, animals, they also show inheritance. So Gregor Mendel, who is the father of genetics, he carried out a lot of experiments related to inheritance using the garden pea plant, that is the Pisum sativum plant. So that is where we discuss the first and second generations, F1 and F2 generations, and how their phenotype and genotype will be. So because Gregor Mendel did not know about DNA or chromosomes, what he did was he explained this inheritance using factors. He said always characteristics are determined by a pair of factors, which was later identified as genes. So then we discussed what genes are, what phenotype is, what genotype is, and also the structure of DNA the G nitrogen base pair that gives rise to the gene in DNA molecules, which is present in chromosomes. And in the previous chapter, we discussed how sex is determined in man, how the fetus becomes either a male child or a female child. So you all know in people, in humans, in all the cells, whether it's a somatic cell or the gamete cell, there are, in somatic cells, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes and in the gamete cell, there are 23 chromosomes. And out of these 23 pairs of chromosomes, 22 pairs are known as autosomal chromosomes. Chromosomes that are responsible for the characteristic of the physical body, characteristic of the person. And the 23rd pair is the chromosome responsible for the sex of the person. And you all know there is the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. So if it is an XX pair, then it is a female. XY pair is a male. So that is how the inheritance occurs. And that is how the sex is determined in man. We also saw the gene linkage that was actually explained or discovered by Morgan. There are genes that do not segregate independently. In other words, certain genes are linked together. So they segregate together as well. So those are linked genes. So based on all these, now we are going to discuss human inherited disorders. So like you already know students, people inherit characteristics from their previous generations. So if you can inherit characteristics, you can also inherit disorders. But if the disorder is caused by a gene, so that is what we will be discussing under human inherited disorders. So under that, first we will look at genetic disorders due to sex-linked inheritance. So like I said a little while ago, you all are familiar with the sex genes. That is the 23rd pair of chromosome, X chromosome, Y chromosome. If the pair is X and X, it's a female. X and Y is a male. And you all know, now if we take the X and Y chromosomes, X is longer and Y is shorter. So this is the X chromosome and that is the Y chromosome. So some of the genes present in the X chromosome are absent in the Y chromosome. So if both X and X combine, then it becomes a 
female. The person will be a female. X and Y, it will be a male. So normally between the eggs and sperms, there is always 50% probability, 50% chance that the fetus will be a male or a female. Equal chances. Now when we say these two chromosomes, X and Y chromosomes, since the X chromosome is longer, what will happen is there will be more characteristics. Now the whole X chromosome or the Y chromosome is not only responsible for the determination of sex. In addition to that, there are genes responsible for other characteristics as well. If you take the X chromosome, there are additional genes that are not present in the Y chromosome. So based on that, there are certain diseases or disorders occurring in men. So all those will be discussed here. We will be discussing only a few examples, but you will understand how this happens. So if I go back. Now here you can see, even though X and Y chromosomes determine the human sex, all the genes present on those sex chromosomes are not used in determination of sex. That is what I told you. Now everything is not to determine whether a fetus is a female or a male. Most of the genes on X and Y chromosomes determine other features as autosomal chromosomes. So, autosomal chromosomes are responsible for other features of the body. Similar to that, there are genes in the X and Y chromosomes responsible for other features. Is that clear to you? So, then, as Y chromosome is shorter than X chromosome, so that is why I explain. Most of the genes complementary for X are absent in Y. That is important. So most of the genes complementary for X are absent in Y. So then what will happen? Only the X chromosome will determine the occurrence of that particular character. So that is how you can have certain or you will get certain disorders. We will see how that happens. Accordingly, in males, for most of the X-linked genes, there are no complementary genes in Y. If we try to understand that, now let's say, we'll say a gene responsible for the clotting of blood. I have explained this clotting of blood. I have explained this when I explain gene linkage also. So if we take it as H, chromosome H. H is the dominant character. This is the dominant character. So this FH chromosome is there. The blood will clot properly, normally. If the gene is recessive, then of course the clotting of blood will not occur as expected. So what will happen is, if you have a male and a female, now X and Y, X and X. So male and female. In males, we will have this particular chromosome only in X. But why? There will be no chromosome. Here again, if we take the females, we will have been both X chromosomes. So in females, since there is a pair of X chromosomes, both of them have the genes responsible for the factor that enables the clotting of blood. So there can be different combination of genes here. The gene expression can vary. You can have both dominant characters, you can have both recessive characters and also you can have a heterozygous genes, dominant and recessive characters. 
So like that there will be combination of genes here. But if you take this one, only in the X chromosome there is this particular gene. Y does not have it. So it can be either just the dominant character or the recessive character. So more chances of the male getting the disorder. We will be discussing this in detail. So but when there are genes present in the X chromosome, it is actually an advantage for the females because females they have two X chromosomes or a pair of X chromosomes as they are 23rd pair of chromosomes whereas those genes are absent in the Y chromosome. So then again, so this is what we discussed. The HH genes, the gene responsible for the factor that makes the blood to clot that is there in the X chromosome but it is not there in the Y chromosome. Is that clear to you? So here, therefore most of the genes in X, whether they are dominant or recessive, they are phenotypically expressed in males. So like I said, because there is only one X chromosome, if it is the dominant character, that is expressed. If it is the recessive character, that is also expressed. But in females, there is a pair of chromosomes. So, but as females possess a pair of X chromosomes, X-linked genes are pair. So, here in females, X-linked genes are pair. They phenotypically express a recessive character only when they are present as double recessive genes. I will go into that. And also, we will consider several genetic disorders that occur due to sex-linked recessive genes. So if we try to understand that. Now like I said here the males it is either the dominant character or the recessive character. Now this is X, this is Y. If it is recessive, if the recessive gene causes the disease you will either have the healthy male or the disease male, male with the disorder. But in females, since we have a pair of X chromosomes, there can be another two gene expressions. Now here we can have all our, both our X, X chromosomes. So we can have dominant and recessive character, recessive and recessive character. So here both are dominant characters, disorder is not there. Here dominant and recessive, then the female actually becomes a carrier. So here this is a healthy female, female, we call this combination as a carrier female. And here, this is female. Only when both the genes are recessive, then the disorder will be present in females. So, three, one out of three females, because there are three different combinations, have the possibility of getting that particular disorder. But if you take the males, now here male, Dominant character, so healthy, healthy male. This is a healthy male, the character is dominant, capital H. Then here the character is recessive. So this person becomes a disease male. So only two types of combinations, 50% chance of the person becoming having the disorder. Only two types of combinations either dominant or recessive. But in females here it is different. There can be a healthy female, a carrier female and disease female. There are no carrier males. So this happens when the character is 
linked to the X chromosome. The X chromosome is longer, it has more genes. Y chromosome is shorter, it has less genes and it usually doesn't have some of the genes that are complement, complementary to the genes present in the X chromosome. So because of that, this is how there are gene expressions for different types of X-linked characteristics. So when the dominant gene is there, the person is healthy. When the recessive gene is there in X, if it is a male, the person has the disease. If it is the female, it is a pair of double recessive instance. Both chromosomes should have the recessive character, then the female has disease. But if the female has a heterozygous chromosomes, that is dominant and recessive character together, then of course the female becomes a carrier. Is that clear to you? So if you understand this concept, we will apply this for the different types of diseases that we are going to discuss after this. So there are many different X-linked or sex-linked disorders. Out of those, we will be discussing hemophilia and color blindness, red-green color blindness. So with that student, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So the first disease, hemophilia. So before y'all read that, I will explain this diagram. Now here you can see if we have a hemophilia condition like I explained in the previous slide, we have the capital H, the gene responsible for the clotting of blood. Capital H is the dominant character, simple H is the recessive character that is given their recessive gene. So here you can see H recessive gene for hemophilia, capital H dominant gene of the recessive gene for hemophilia. So if you try to understand what the disease is, when we have hemophilia, when a person has hemophilia, now normally when you get a wound, what happens? In blood there are platelets, the platelets rupture and due to the availability of vitamin K, blood clots and when the blood clots at the bleeding site, excessive bleeding is prevented. So clotting is a good thing that occurs when there is a bleeding site and it prevents blood loss. But a person having hemophilia, in that person the blood does not clot. So hemophilia which occurs due to a X-linked recessive gene only present in males in the population. Now this is only present in males. The reason is hemophilia is caused by the recessive gene. So here, when a wound or cut occurs, it is essential to clot blood. At that time, when a blood clot is formed, it stops excessive bleeding. That is the condition. So this is a condition where hemophilia occurs. Hemophilic patients, blood does not clot. Therefore, they die because of bleeding. Females act as carriers for this disease. So normally in the population, naturally, there are no females, but males have this disorder. So this is what happens. Now if you have a carrier female and healthy male. Now from this you can see these are the chromosomes, the 23rd pair of chromosome because this gene responsible for the production of the absence of hemophilia, that is the dominant character. A person having hemophilia is the recessive character. Those genes are linked to the X chromosome. So here, if we say a female, both are going to be X chromosomes. 
So in that, when we say carrier, I explain this to you all, if both the genes are dominant, a healthy female. One is dominant, other one is recessive, then of course, the female is a carrier. So here, capital H and simple H. Then on this side, we have the healthy male. So X and Y chromosomes, in that, healthy male means capital H. No gene in the Y chromosome. When there is a segregation of genes during the production of gametes, you get two X gametes. Here, of course, X and Y gametes. And in this one, one will have the dominant gene. The other one will have the recessive gene. But from the father or the male, it is going to be the dominant gene only. There is no gene in the Y chromosome. And when they combine, now here you can see capital H combines with capital H. So these are both X, X chromosomes. So who, this is a female child. Female child with both dominant genes. So then the child is going to be healthy or the person will be healthy. Here, healthy female. Healthy female. Then this is a combination where you get the capital H for the X chromosome and then the Y chromosome. So since it's the XY combination, a male and it is the dominant character, so healthy male. Here we will have healthy male. Then this one. So if we look at this third combination, X and X chromosomes are combining and here it is the recessive gene, here it is the dominant gene. And normally when we write, we always write the dominant gene first. Although they are in different order, here first recessive and then dominant, but we write the dominant gene first. So both are X chromosomes, dominant and recessive genes. So when you have a combination like that, heterozygous nature, then heterozygous chromosomes, what is it? The female becomes a carrier. So here, carrier female, carrier female. And finally, we have the X chromosome and the Y chromosome combined. Here also, the X chromosome has the recessive character. X chromosome from here, you can see it's the recessive character. From here, Y chromosome does not have the G. So what is this condition? A male with the disease. So disease male. Disease male. So you have a carrier female, healthy male. From the parents, carrier mother, healthy father. You get a healthy daughter, a healthy son, a carrier daughter and a disease son. If you have four children, theoretically, these are the possibilities. So both the females, one is healthy, the other one is a carrier. But if you take the males, one male is healthy, the other one is, has the disorder. So that is what happens when it is an X-linked chromosome. Is that clear to you? So this is one condition where you have a carrier female and a healthy male. So if we just summarize that. Carrier female healthy male. So you will get a healthy female, healthy male,
then you have the carrier female and you have the disease male. So four different combinations, four different type of offspring. Healthy female, healthy male, carrier female, disease male. So this is where the mother is a carrier, father is healthy. Now if we have a situation where the mother is healthy but the father has the disease, then will the offspring be the same or not? We will try that. I'm sure you all also can try it once by yourself, then you can look at this because you know how genes segregate. So an instance where we have a healthy female and disease male or male with the disorder hemophilia where the blood does not clot easily. The blood does not clot easily. So what will happen here? You will have the X chromosomes and you will have the X and Y chromosomes. Here we have the healthy female and male with the disease. So when genes are formed, the genes segregate to form the gametes, then what will happen? Here we will have two X chromosomes and here we will have X and Y chromosomes. Y, X, X and X. Both are going to be capital H. This is simple H. Then when they come by, we can have a combination like this. Then a combination like that. So here, X and X. Here it is going to be X and Y. So X and X, X and Y. In this, from this gamete, its dominant gene, capital H. From here, it is the simple H. In this one, we have the capital H again. And from there, it is the Y chromosome. So how are these two offspring going to be? This is a female carrier, male, healthy. Then we are going to have another two offspring. So here we will have X, X and here we will have X and Y. X and Y. Now this X dominant gene, this X recessive gene. So what happens there? Again a female carrier. Because capital H and simple H. Here, capital H and Y. So, a male who is healthy. So, can you all see now? When the mother is healthy or the female is healthy, both the sons, the male offspring are healthy. But the daughters or the female offsprings, because the father or the male ha has a recessive gene or the disease, they become carriers. But 
in both instances, the previous one and this one, we did not come across a recessive combination of X chromosomes. That is, the disease female was not there. Is that clear to you? So, this is a healthy female. Earlier we saw the female is a carrier. The first example. Here you can see the female is a carrier. The male is healthy. That is the mother is a carrier mother of hemophilia. The father is a healthy father. Then we got the offspring where we had healthy female and a carrier female. At the same time, a healthy male and a disease male. So those were the offsprings there. Then we looked at the second example where we had a healthy female and a male with a disease. You will not have a male who is a carrier because he only has one X chromosome. So it can be either healthy or disease. So then here we saw from the gametes when they combine you have the mother both dominant edge then father one is recessive because he has the disease but the Y chromosome does not have any gene. So when it combines the combination will be like this. You get a female from H and H who is a carrier then you get a male from H from the mother Y chromosome from the father, so male becomes healthy. Then on this side, again you have the dominant H chromosome in the a dominant X gene. I'll repeat that. Dominant H gene in the X chromosome and recessive H gene from the X chromosome. So they are capital H, simple H, a heterozygous instance where the female becomes a carrier. Then here, we have X, H and Y. So there it is a male and the male is healthy. This is how we get the offspring there. Only two types of genotype. Female carrier and male healthy. Is that clear to you? So if you are given a combination, say the male and female having different conditions, you should be able to identify the offspring in this similar manner. So you write the parents, the mother and father or the male and female. Then you write the genes. Then you write the offspring, the children who can be born. This is theoretical. So you will be able to identify what type of offspring there will be. Is that clear to you? So this is the first disorder. That is a disorder caused by the X-linked chromosome. So it's a, it's a sex-linked disorder. There is another one that we will be discussing. It is the red-green color blindness. So with that students, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Right. So the next one is color blindness that is red green color blindness. Now when a person has red green color blindness, now we can differentiate all the colors. Seven colors of the white light, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. But when a person has red green color blindness, they cannot differentiate between red and green color. So, for example, if they look at a color light, now in the junctions when you are driving a vehicle, you are supposed to obey the color lights. You have the three colors, red, amber and green. So, a person who has color blindness, the red color and the green color cannot be differentiated. They will not see a difference between the two colors. So, that is the color blindness, red, green, color blindness. So here, this is the most common sex-linked inherited disease. So most common sex-linked inherited disease. Now this of course is not fatal, 
unlike hemophilia. Now, hemophilia, when we discussed that, you saw when a person has hemophilia, if they get even a small cut, they can die due to excessive bleeding. Especially when they meet with an accident or something, if there is internal bleeding or even external bleeding, there can be excessive bleeding and the person can die. But when someone has color blindness, of course, it is a disorder. It can lead to certain problems, but it is not fatal. As long as you are careful on the road and all that, it is not fatal. Only problem is they cannot distinguish between the two colors. So the reason for this disease is a recessive gene in X chromosome. So again, a recessive gene in X chromosome. So all the genes, hemophilia, color blindness, the genes are linked to the X chromosome. And the Y chromosome does not have the complementary gene. The sufferer cannot distinguish red color from green color. That is important. The sufferer cannot distinguish red color from green color. This is common among males but rarely occur in females. Always the sex-linked characteristics because they are X-linked genes, it is rare in females. But this of course can occur in females. Now hemophilia usually does not occur in females because in the, I didn't mention that before, just try to understand that also students, when a fetus has both recessive genes, then of course usually the fetus itself gets aborted. So in the population, normally we don't get females who have the disease hemophilia, but we do get males. Again, similar to that, red green color blindness, it's common among males, but it is rarely seen in females because the chances of a female getting the disease is less. But here, a female with the disease can live or even a male with the disease can live. It is not fate that you have to remember. So when a colorblind female is married to a healthy male, the inheritance of color blindness is as in the below diagram. The diagram is actually given in the next slide. So we will look at it there. The chance to show the sex linked inherited disease in females is low. So usually less chances of the females getting the disease. The chance of getting those disease in female children is high if they are married to blood relatives. So this is a problem. Now the chance of getting those disease in females is high if there is marriage among blood relatives. If both the male and the female are blood relatives, then if they have the character in them, then there is a chance that the female child also will get the disease. So the reason for that is the female that joined the family is most probably a carrier. So the female that joined the family is most probably a carrier. Now we will try to understand that once we look at the diagram. So diagram you can see colorblind female is married to a healthy male. So here of course we can look at all three instances. So we will look at that in this diagram. Here you can see simple C is the recessive gene for color blindness. Dominant gene is the capital C of the recessive gene for color blindness. Of if simple C is there, that is the recessive gene. In males, there is only one X chromosome. So the recessive condition, the male will be, will have the disorder. But in females, if both X chromosome have the recessive gene, simple C, then the female will have the disorder. So now we are going to look at the parents as told here. A colorblind female, that is a diseased female, is married to a healthy male. So here.
disease female and here we have a healthy male. So here we have the disease female so both are X chromosome and since she has the disease both have to be the recessive gene that is simple C. Here it is the X and Y chromosomes the male and healthy male so it will be the capital C there. So we have the two parents the disease female and the healthy male. So from them we get the gametes. So if we get the gametes from the female, female both are X gametes and then the recessive genes that is simple C responsible for the disease color blindness. So both the gametes will have the simple C. Both gametes will have the simple C. Then here we have the male who is a healthy male. So the X G will have the dominant character capital C and the Y gene Y chrom I'll repeat and the Y chromosome does not have the gene there. X chromosome has the dominant gene capital C. So when they combine when they combine now this gene X combines with the other X gene here. This has a simple C, this has a capital C, dominant and recessive character. Dominant capital C, recessive simple C. So this is a female because she has capital C simple C combination, a carrier female. So this is going to be a carrier female. Then next one, X chromosome and Y chromosome, X chromosome has simple C. So X and Y male but simple C recessive condition so disease male, disease male, disease male. Now here the combination. X and X, both chromosomes are X chromosomes. The gene is simple C here, capital C there. So we will have capital C, simple C. Again, heterozygous nature. So the female is a carrier. Carrier female. Carrier female. Then the last one. We have the X chromosome here and the Y chromosome from here. X chromosome with the simple C, recessive character. So then a male who has the disease. So disease male. Disease male. So we have the offspring, the children. Carrier female, disease male, carrier female, disease male. Only two types. Why? Because the female has the disease, the male is healthy. Healthy male, disease female. So both the daughters, both the female children are carriers. Both the male children have the disease. So this is how the offspring occurs when the female has the disease and the male is healthy. So like I told your students, now this particular disorder, red-green color blindness, it's not fatal. So because of that, you get males who have the disease and males who are healthy. At the same time, when we say females, rarely you can find females with the disease. So this is an instance where we have a female with the disease. But in the population, you will have females who are healthy and females who are carriers. So we will look at other combinations as well, other possible combination of males and females. Let's say 
if we have a healthy female and we have disease male then what will happen healthy female the x chromosomes both male x and y chromosomes x x healthy so it has to have the capital c both dominant genes the male x and y with disease so this will be the recessive character y does not have any gene there so then if we get the gametes we will have the gametes there so x x x y now both these are capital c capital c both the genes have the dominant character here the x has the simple c that is the recessive gene and y chromosome does not have the gene so when these gametes combine what will happen when this gene combines with this gene from the male we will get x and x x and x capital c simple c then we will have this gene combined with this this so x chromosome y chromosome x y x chromosome has the capital c dominant character then we have the next one this particular gene here so both are x chromosomes and when these two combine one is x the other one is y so here capital c simple c here we have capital c so these are the offspring now here female but both these are different capital c and simple c so it is a heterozygous instance the female becomes a carrier carrier female then here male healthy capital c healthy male again xx female capital c simple c so carrier female and finally here again a male with the dominant character so no color blindness healthy male carrier females and healthy males now can you see the difference earlier we had carrier female disease male because the parents were different parents were disease female and healthy male you had carrier females and disease male now here we have healthy female and disease male you get carrier females and healthy males as the children so it's different from the previous instance can we have another set of parents what is the possibility we can have a carrier mother a carrier female and a healthy male we we did not have a carrier female and healthy male we did not have so we can have that as well 
carry a female healthy male so if we have the next type carry a female healthy male so carry a female both hh -H, male h and y x and y these are both xx since it's a carrier dominant character simple recessive character capital c simple c dominant character recessive character so that is a carrier female and when it is a healthy male capital c so from here we get the gametes gametes are going to be like that so here you will have both x gametes here it's one x and one y x x x y those are the gametes now here one gamete will have the dominant character the other one will have the recessive character here of course the x chromosome x gamete will have the dominant character y does not have that G. So then when they combine, now this combines here, this combines with Y, then here the combination. Right. We will have both X, X, X and Y again x and x x and y if we look at the combinations there x x x y x x and x y so here dominant character capital c then here also capital c dominant character then what type of a female is that? Female who is healthy. Healthy female. Then here, dominant character capital C, Y does not have any gene responsible for color blindness or the dominant gene both are not there because it's a Y chromosome. So healthy male. Healthy Male. So here it is a combination of two genes. This one has a simple C recessive character. This is a dominant character. So we will write the dominant character first, then the recessive character. A female dominant and recessive genes means a carrier female. Carrier female. Carrier female. Then what do we have here? This, this one, recessive character and Y. So here we have recessive character Y. Again a male, but since this is the recessive character, the disease male. Disease male. Now can you see? We have all different combinations. We had a carrier female and a healthy male. We have a healthy female, a healthy male, carrier female and disease male. All different types of offspring or children. A daughter who is healthy, son who is healthy, daughter who acts as a carrier and son who has the disease, color blindness. So that is another combination. Is that clear to you all? So we have looked at three different instances. This is female, a healthy male. Then we saw a healthy female, this is male, 
and then carry a female healthy male now like they said if there is marriage among relatives let's say if the male has the disease and the female has the is a carrier female is a carrier then what do you think will happen more chances for the occurrence of diseases a situation where we have a carrier female and disease male then we'll see what happens x chromosomes and by disease male means recessive character carrier is capital c simple c a heterozygous condition so then from there we get the gametes the gametes are going to be like that okay we'll have the gametes here Why? So here the recessive character, here of course both are X, dominant and recessive character. And when they combine, okay. So when they combine, this is how X and Y, here again X and X, X and Y. So here, dominant character capital C, from there simple C. So capital C, simple C, the female is going to be a carrier. Carrier female and here x and y chromosomes x it is the dominant character capital c so male who is healthy healthy male and then here we have again both xx chromosomes but this is a recessive character this is also a recessive character. So simple C, simple C. Here we have a female who has the disease. Disease, female. And finally we have X and Y. The fourth combination, X has the recessive gene, Y does not have the gene. So simple C, again disease, me. Now can you see, there is a carrier female, only one healthy male, one out of four children, only one is healthy. Disease female, disease male. Now if these two people, the carrier female and the disease male, they are blood relatives, and if they marry among themselves, because they are blood relatives, they have the genes in their chromosomes. Genes responsible, recessive gene responsible for the color blindness. So now can you see, three out of four children either have the disease or act as carriers. So more probability of the offspring, the children having the recessive character, the disorder. So that is what we discussed before also. When there is marriage among blood relatives, because it is the X-linked chromosome and more chances of getting the double recessive character, disease female, that is possible. Is that clear, student? So we have actually looked at four different combinations of parents. If I quickly go back, so we started off with this first one, 
where we had the disease female, healthy male. And then we got the carrier female, disease male, carrier female, disease male. So two carrier females and two disease males. Then we have the situation where we had a healthy female and a disease male. So there are of course we had again carrier females and healthy males. Then we had the carrier female and healthy male. So when we had the carrier female and healthy male, we got this type of children, healthy female, healthy male, carrier female and male with the disease. So here of course 50% healthy, one carrier, one with the disease. Then finally, if we have a carrier female and disease male, then you can see we get carrier females, healthy male, disease female, disease male. So in all instances, the combination of offspring, the children varies. So depending on the male and female who get married, that is the mother and father who have the offspring, that is their children. So depending on the gene combination that is the chromosomes how they are combined whether they are healthy carriers or uh, disease females or healthy or disease male depending on the combination you will get different combinations of offspring that is the children is that clear to your student so i have shown you all four different ways how the parents can be and how the children can be I'm sure you all can understand that. So in this chapter students, I started off the chapter by discussing what genetic disorders are. Under that, the first type we saw the gene linked disorders that is the X linked, sex linked chromosomes that cause disorders. And under that, we looked at two diseases. One is hemophilia. In hemophilia condition, the blood does not clot. This is again due to a recessive gene present in the X chromosome, linked to the X chromosome. So because of that, females are either healthy, they can be a carrier and usually in the population, you don't have the disease female. Like I said, naturally, the female gets aborted. So because of that, you don't really get females with hemophilia. But males having hemophilia is seen in the population. But unlike hemophilia, color blindness is not fatal. The person who has color blindness cannot distinguish between red and green color. So that is again an X-linked chromosome. So there, of course, you can have females with color blindness, but that is also rare. Now, out of all these, only in this instance, we got the disease female. In all the others, we had disease males and healthy or carrier females, carry healthy males, but disease female only in this instance. So it's a rare occurrence, but it is possible when there is marriage among blood relatives, especially if they have these recessive genes in them. So that is what you need to understand from this chapter student. So with that, I'm going to end this chapter and in the next chapter also, we'll be dis discussing some disorders, genetical disorders, but due to gene mutations. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.